Lulu. Hello, folks. Welcome to this Hangout on Air tonight, a William Kepley-inspired production. Sleeper beers! And William's going to explain to us, he is in North Carolina. <laughs> He is in North Carolina, and then I'll say where everybody else is from. He's going to explain to us what is a sleeper beer. A sleeper beer is one that's it's out in the marketplace, but it doesn't get very much attention. It sort of flies under the radar, unappreciated, sometimes not even listed on the on the company's website, and uh, it's a, sort of a dormant beer, sleeping, but one that, uh, upon closer examination, would definitely deserve. A closer look and maybe even something that should be much more widely available. That's how I would summarize it. So it's good and it ought to be popular, but it isn't. Essentially, that's true. And I guess the quintessential sleeper beer would have been the Bush Signature Copper Lager. Oh. Except it's it's gone. Oh. Very uh, lamentable. Very lamentable. Um well. Let's see here how we're going to do this. I invited a lot of people. Um, Eric, you can moderate the comments. If you don't mind, if you're able to get your audio straight. Uh, <laughs> I, I have William in North Carolina. We have Jean-Pierre in Mobile. We have Jacob in Indiana. We have Eric in Massachusetts. And back down south, we have Bill McIntosh in, my, in Florida and myself in Louisiana. I picked an interesting sleeper beer, and no one could guess what it was. Nope. But it's, I gave some clue, I gave one clue. It's Spaten Optimator. Nice. Very excellent. You know, you don't see this much. It's produced in Germany, but it's not sold. It's not sold in Germany. Malt liquor, label out. Label out, you what you know about that. It's uh, Best Buy, March of 2018. It's brewed in Munich, Germany. It's 7.6% alcohol. It's a Doppelbach, a Dunkel Doppelbach, so it's a dark Doppelbach. It's not like an American malt liquor, a Helles Doppelbach. So this is a malt liquor, it says there right on the label, which that's a meaningless term, we know that. A malt liquor can be an ale or a lager. It's just a euphemism for strong beer. So label out what you know about that, Jeremy. All right. So anyway, uh, Drunken One is here, and he's from Texas, oh, and he survived. I barely clicked the button. <laughs> All right. So we've, got, we've got two. These are cast of critters. we got Mr. Eric. Uh, uh, I, I, I know John Pierre. Nice to see you, John. Uh, uh, that Ronald guy, that arrogant bastard. I'm just teasing. And uh, uh, Mr. William is cool. I'm just teasing, just teasing. Got love, got love. Uh, Jacob, I don't know necessarily. And Bill, I've seen before, but I, which, what's your, uh, what's your uh, uh, channel name? Who are you? Well, I, I don't, I don't have a channel, Drunken One. I, oh, okay. I, I just swoop in here on Wednesdays and hang out with the group, and then I'm gone like the wind. Like the wind, yes, sir, yes, sir. No, I've seen you in here before. Yeah, I've seen you in here before, but. Uh, Thanks for having me, guys. I, ju I just rolled in. Had to spank the wife man a little bit. That I'm it. here. That happens. <laughs> wow. So now we've got the Southwest, the South Central, the Southeast, the 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 North Mid Atlantic, I guess. We, uh, Mid -Atlantic. North Carolina. Yeah, the, okay. upper, the upper southeast. The uh, we have yeah. we have the uh, old Northwest Territory, and we've got New England, and we might have Canada. But Michael Jennings, he told me he a lot of times he has to work, and I said hey, you're going to put your career ahead of this. Okay. Here's the spot in the. So we know Jay's sleeper here. Yeah, so that's my sleeper. The spades. The spades. Okay, so uh. Oh, Gary's here from Tennessee, Wally, Virginia. Oh, go on, hey Gary. Hey, y'all can mute y'all can mute all those chimes and, and Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. You can there, Terry. There, Terry. I just I just turned on my computer. Okay. 
All right, who okay. wants to present a sleeper beer? Yeah, let's go up to New England, Eric. Anybody? Eric in New England. I know you're you're hot to tell us, and then we'll go back down, and then north, and then north. yeah, sure. Um, well, I wouldn't really say that the style I chose, if you can see it there, I wouldn't really say the style that I chose is quite a sleeper company itself, a sleeper company, and as far as it's concerned, but I think it's a grossly underrated beer and one that doesn't get enough love within the style, which is IPA, and as an IPA, it is a English style IPA, it is the Goose mm -hmm. Island IPA. At 5.9% alcohol by volume, and 55 IBUs. Yes, it's an English IPA. It's not meant to be a hoppy bomb of an American West Coast or a hay topper or a treehouse trillium kind of beer. It's supposed to be a little bit more me mellow and laid back and more on the malt side than a big hoppy side. So for me, it's a great one. It's everywhere. You can find it everywhere, and it's relatively a good price. Okay. Now, your audio is breaking up a little bit. But he's using a notebook, and I don't mean a notebook like we're thinking of the modern day. He's actually using a spiral-bound notebook. Um, but uh, 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 I love I love Goose Island, and talking about Goose Island, um, it's a great beer, and uh, it doesn't get much attention. And it's it's like seen as old hat or something, you know. Now, Jean, Jean is cleaning his house because he does that during hangouts. But um, uh, now, going, back, going down, you put a gun in my head. Going down to uh, Florida, what do you have, Bill? I, I found this beer. I literally, I, I found it um, some time ago. And, and I, I, just, I was in a, a, I don't know, gas station, whatever, and... and had never really heard of it before, uh, so I had to buy it. And since that time, it's in my fridge all the time. It, it's a macro, so it's 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 hiding in plain sight kind of deal. But it is um, wow, oh. ice house. Oh, yeah, I would call that a sleeper beer because it's a nice ice beer. But you'll never see a television commercial for it. You'll never see a promotional. What, what beer was that, Bill? What beer you had? You'll never see it in Louisiana. Keystone Ice. Oh, yeah. You'll, you'll never see it in Louisiana. It hasn't been here for almost four years. Uh, oh, it, 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 it kind of falls into the bang for the buck uh, group, too. I bought a 15-pack for $7.99. Okay. That's a good price. Yeah. 15 pack it, his audio is breaking up but a 15 pack for 7.99 now that is an exceptional yeah. price um let me just mention this real fast oh this beer is so good it's so chocolatey and rich cherries there's rich cherries even some plums and prunes more of a more of a fall beer in my opinion spot yeah beer. but the co first cold front of the season is coming through <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> now uh Hey, there's John and Neil over there from Georgia. Welcome. Now we're going to go. I'm going to get to everybody. I'm not going to skip anybody now. Uh, so Eric picked a good one. Bill picked a good one. I picked a really good one. Now, Drunken One, what is your sleeper beer? Uh, I picked a good one. Oh, hey. Uh, all right. Here you go. Bam. Bam. This stuff's called Foolproof Brewing Company. Well, bam. Oh, pardon the uh, gloss on the uh, can because it's Peter. This is a uh, nice. Let me turn down my monitor light a little bit. The other turned down. Yeah, that's not it. Okay, maybe I can show it to you better. Here, let's try it like this. So there it is. Foolproof Brewing. It's got a little barbecue thing on there. This is a uh, IPA. It is a 6%. And it is brewed in Pawtucket. Rhode Island, wherever the hell is that? Pawtucket, Rhode Pawtucket, Island, Rhode Island. In my neck. Now that's your neck of the woods? Uh, have you ever heard of Foolproof Brewing Company? No, I've never heard of it. Yes. Oh, yeah, all right. We'll get them around here. If we can get them all the way in Texas, then y'all should be getting them there. Yeah, we'll right. probably be able to get it in Louisiana soon enough, but I got to say, Texas does get a lot more variety than this we so live. We rule, baby. We rule. <laughs> yeah, because you got 20 million people and we have four. 
<laughs> he said we have four. But that's what you do with it. Twenty million is a lot more than four million. But two big cities. I we were doing you know. the. I'm sorry, Pierre. I didn't mean to run you over. No, I was saying Texas, the big cities, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio. Yes, you know. sir. Yeah, right there. It's almost the whole population. We were doing Bush Ice tonight. You know, I went out of my way to find one of those. The Bush Ice, that was the right one, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that would have been cool if you could have joined this. But we have some ice beers coming up. Huh? Wait a second. Did I miss that? Do y'all have jobs? Do y'all do anything more than drink beer all damn day? No. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, I don't have a, like a job job. I, I'm independent. Oh, yeah. but I, did did y'all already do the ice the the ice bush thing? Uh, we did. Yeah, we did the. We did bush. Oh yeah, yeah, we did yeah. the bush. We did the Anheuser Busch triple. Uh, what do what do you call it? The Anheuser Busch oh, ice beers. Oh well, shit. Huh, good yeah. thing I didn't get a six pack. I got one tall one, so uh, I'll just I'll deal with it. That's really uh, not. Uh, don't don't despair because we're always available for ice hangouts. Now, <laughs> all right, um, we can do ad hoc. We can do ad hoc hangouts. Okay. Now, William Kepley, well, your audio. The first night was not ideal. Who else is bringing a slipper beer? Okay, Eric. William Kepley's going to do it. Go, William. My sleeper beer has literally been put to sleep. It was a victim of beer euthanasia. Oh, old tankard ale. Oh, beer euthanasia. Very lamentable, like the bush sitting in Old tankard, yes. Served a much better fate. Children in Asia. Pat really boxed it. It didn't give the time, the beer time to develop a market. Or, oh. And it was, but this is a really great, this is one of my favorite beers, period. Hmm. And I'm sad to see it go, but maybe, uh, you know, in, in 50 years from now, they'll bring it back from the dead, you know, awaken what? it like they did this time. Who knows? I've never seen that ever, period. It was sad because uh, when they came out with Old Tanker Dale, there was an initial bit of promotion, which with Paps means not much. But uh, the Therns brought it in, and I bought some, and I just was like, William, I was bowled over by that. That was such a good craft beer. But it wasn't really a craft beer. It had been on the market up until 1997. But it was so wonderful. And but what are we dealing with? A crowded beer market, right? A flooded beer market. It sat on the shelf, being bypassed by everybody. And then it just oof, was gone. So that, that, you're right, William. That's sort of like the Bush Signature Copper Lager. Two right there. Two wonderful beers from major producers that yep. did nothing. And got no promotion, no doubt, and were fiascos. So not only did you say they were sleeper beers, but they were euthanized. They were put to sleep. That's right. <laughs> euthanized. Uh, they put out one batch of this beer, and that that was it. One batch. It was on the shelf. They never replenished it with fresh product, and uh, because I every place I ever saw this beer, it had the exact same code date, <laughs> from day one to the end of it. Of it. Tenure. It was always the same. It was like they, they took a pile of poop and threw it against the wall. And if it sticks, fine. If it don't, we'll scoop it up and move on. And what they did with this, they scooped it up and moved on. But it was terrible the way that they rolled out this beer and then and, and abandoned it. Yeah, it was a it was a it was just an it was atrocious. Phenomenal. It was an atrocious way to handle a fine product. And uh blame perhaps. Yeah, I can sense I can sense William's anger. And uh uh what was I gonna say? Yeah. Um I can't remember. Oh, William is the internet's code expert, by the way, folks. Uh if you ever start a, a website or a channel, it can focus on those things. <laughs> Call it uh, code breakers. Yeah. Uh, code breakers, William's code breakers. Uh, now we got uh, uh Jacob over there in Indiana. Ooh, what do you okay. do? What is your sleeper beer, buddy boy? Oh, Carry Jacob. Carry Jacob. Put your volume up. Work with us here, bro. <laughs> we're gonna really, <laughs> we're gonna really get teased by the Dominion of Canada tonight. All right. Um, Earth to Jacob. Jacob, you got to reboot because your audio is 
deader than Bush Signature Kappa Lager. <laughs> it's deader than um, Old Tankerdale. It's deader than Michelob Dark Lager. That was another example. That's another example. Bud Rye, deader than Bud Rye. Mm. Why, X, Y? Oh. I remember this. Well, right. Well, at least they promoted it for a while until they lost interest in it. Yeah. That was a very hot. So, so what was the whole dry thing about? Um, Eric gives me a hard time about my audio, and his audio is terrible tonight, so I feel vindicated. Um, Jacob, can you hear us? No, Jacob, no. you have to buy a microphone. Now, hey, but don't feel bad. You can write text, and we'll and Eric will read the text. See, because Eric is clever. Now, of course, Eric can't read the text because his audio is bad, so I'll have to be like Speed Racer. He could be my legs, and I'll be Racer X and be his eyes. Now, uh, <laughs> I want what y'all are smoking. <laughs> now, drunk, what a room. What a room. <laughs> drunk, drunk and one, you don't remember that episode? Drunk and one asked about. Um, oh, I don't It's a fam damnly again, isn't it, buddy? <laughs> Dry. Okay, so what's up with the dry? What's up with dry? I, I know what ice is about. What's up with dry? What's that mean? Yeah, uh, uh, drunken when I asked about dry beer, back in the late 80s, like 1989, there was sort of this push for dry beers, meaning that they were uh, very crisp, but their sweetness wasn't too strong. So you had low sweetness, a very crisp beer, but it wasn't a light beer. It was the same alcohol level as a regular, like, say, Budweiser. Like, Bud Dry was 5% as was Budweiser. But it was a lot, and I and Dr. Dave, you, you've watched his videos, he complains a lot about the macro beers being too sweet, like sickly sweet. And I can't necessarily disagree with that. And so the, the dry beers was an attempt to alleviate that complaint. Right, right. Without without being any more alcohol filled, they they weren't as sweet. Is that correct? Yeah. Under right, right. Same yeah, alcohol. Right, you know? Same alcohol, but crisper and not as like syrupy sweet. Right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. Okay. No, I, I get it. I was a, yeah. yeah, I was a fan of Bud Dry, but that whole concept just was lost on people. They never understood what it meant, really, and it wasn't explained well. No, no, that, that, that you did a fine job explaining that, Mr. Mr. Ron, Mr. Terrio, sir. But it slowly died out, and, it, and when the ice beers came into play, ice beers just knocked dry out the out the picture. Now, uh, we're gonna yeah. listen, we're gonna go to Gary over there in Tennessee, formerly from Virginia. What is your sleeper beer? And I did watch your uh, I did watch your Wild Irish Rose videos. You know that you know that I commented on them. His audio is bad. What's up with your chat room, bro? <laughs> it's not me. Hey, I know. I know. Usually, you're the one crapping out. <laughs> hey, but I tried to tell them. I tried to tell them how to solve the problem, but they ignored me. Um, yeah, don't you? <laughs> no, I said you got to feed it through. You got to. You got to feed it through. You see what you do is you go to Microsoft Edge and you start feeding it, and what it's going to do is going to give you an alert. It's going to tell you you've stumbled across some vintage web tech. This is the truth, mm -hmm. and then it'll say it'll say you need to feed it through Microsoft Internet Explorer, which is a much older platform. Mm -hmm. Once you do that, it'll be fine. It'll be slow, you know, Microsoft Internet Explorer slow, but it'll it'll you won't have the audio issues because mm -hmm. there's a problem, drunken one, with this uh, plugins, and so uh, Firefox said we're not even dealing with plugins. They just opted out of it. We're not doing Hangouts. They say, if you want to do Hangouts on Firefox, do use Skype. Uh, but that's a whole different like little universe, you know? Uh, so let's see. So uh, Gary, you might have to route it through uh, Explorer, like I said, and uh, it'll probably alleviate that issue. Um, but like I said, Eric can, Eric can be Racer X, and you can be Speed Racer, and he can be your eyes, and you can be his legs, and he'll read your comments if you type them. On the uh, chat now, Eric, you got any comments on chat? Any appropriate comments on chat? Uh, I can try to find some here. Let me go and investigate for 
There you go. Okay. While you're Let investigating, we're gonna, we're gonna try John and Neely, who's gonna give us his sleep review. John and Neely, can you hear us over there on your end of the world? We have two Eric's. John, I'll explain that in a minute. minute. Oh well. What can you do? Um, uh, all right, John, it's your turn, buddy. Chime in. John and Neil, speak. He froze up. Can you hear me? Now we can. Yes. Absolutely. Good, Jacob. Good. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> progress is made. Yeah, exactly. Indeed. Wayne's right. Progress is made. Go, Jacob. Go, go, go. Okay. So, with my sleeper beer, I went with... Uh, I went with a specific one, but I was going with more of an idea. So there's a there's a fair amount of beers that I would say there's kind of a negative stigma around, yeah. namely uh, your American adjunct lagers and uh, your malt liquors. Yeah. Especially when it comes to uh, you know the forty ounce and above malt liquors. So I went. With Magnum, <laughs> is that really a sleeper beer? I guess it is. Yeah, yeah, sure. Magnum. Well, I, I, I think it is a sleeper beer. I'll tell you right now. I think it's a sleeper beer, and I was thinking about buying some of that sleeper stuff. Okay, go, go. And here's the thing: I think there's a lot of people that don't try this stuff because it has such a negative stigma around it. And I think that there's a lot of people that if they just try it and give it a chance, they might actually like it. I, I can take that. Yeah, yeah. Steel Reserve is like two fifty nine. I seen it today. Yeah. Two fifty nine for Steel Reserve and a body. <laughs> that, that's, that's a whole bunch of buzz in a bottle right there for two dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> yeah, and the and the problem with that is Drunken One lives in Texas and they get that eight point one percent Steel Reserve, which is a knockout beer. We and you get, get the six percent. Six percent. Yeah, we get the six percent, which is a lot more suitable for my weak little you. But uh, Jacob, yeah. do you notice what that Magnum says? What does it say exactly? Though? Read the whole label. It says Magnum Premium Magnum Malt Liquor, and then at the top it says Cold Wind Blue. You see what he said? And it's he said, the new. He said Premium Malt Liquor. Premium. Oh, yeah. They say premium everywhere. Premium is like, you know, whatever. They just might as well omit that word. Well, one thing one thing I will say, Jacob, about Magnum, it's not, you know, compared to most like some of the others like Schlitz or Steel Reserve or Old English or King Cobra. Magnum is kinda it's out there but not out there versus the other two. You know, if, if that's yeah. a fair description. Yeah, I have to agree. Do you want to know what premium means? Nothing. No. It means whatever you. It means whatever you want it to mean. That, that, right, right, exactly. Right, right. You feel like it's a sign of crap. You feel like you're getting something if it's a still reserved triple X. You know, right, export. Yeah. Right. Now Gary right. said he thinks he fixed his audio issue. He had to. He had. He had his guitar cable plugged in for his USB guitar cable. That could. That could uh make a problem. <laughs> yeah. USB guitar. Gary wants. To, Gary wants to tell us about an about ice beer. Go, Gary. All right. Can you all hear me now? Yeah. 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 Right. 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 So my sleeper beer is Keystone Ice, mostly because of the taste and its price. It's a great all-purpose beer, in my opinion. No craft beer tonight. Woo. <laughs> We're all drinking. Except for you, Eric. <laughs> uh, I haven't done my sleeper beer yet, but go ahead, Gary. Well, I mean, that's just oh, really for my... That's just really for my... Sleeper beer, just Keystone Ice for those reasons. You know, to come me, on. come on, John, just do it. No, I was going to say with Keystone Ice, Gary, and uh, who else had Keystone Ice too? Uh, Bill. Yep. Um, <laughs> you know, of the ice beers, I guess the five point nine ones are the ones that kind of give me, make me feel a little bit loopy at times. You know, that one, <laughs> with the exception, with the exception of Bush Ice. Bush Ice, for whatever the reason, just seems works okay with me, but. But unfortunately, we don't get bush ice here. I have to drive to Pensacola. <clears throat> we had it here, came back, disappeared again. So 
Um, but the 5.9, again, Bush Ice is one of them. He, uh, old, uh, Milwaukee's Best, Old Milwaukee Ice, uh, Keystone Ice, and Natty Ice. Are the five point or the five point nine? But the ones I could tolerate are uh, Bud Ice and Ice House. So, you know, yeah, but anyway. Ice House is all right. Yeah, I, I I make some Ice House. I mm -hmm. do too. I, I like Ice yeah, House. Okay. I like Drunken One. I think Ice House has an interesting little yeast quality. You ever notice? Now they went back to the five point five percent instead of the six point nine. When I was at the store uh, the other day. When I was at the store the other day, I noticed, can and this is the store that has all the old beer that I keep talking about. It had cans upon cans of the tall boys of 6.9% still. Oh, oh yeah, they're going to end up having to pay people to buy it. They're going to have to I guess. Pay. They're gonna 99 have to pay. cents, mark it down. Yeah, they got to pay yeah, the yeah. customer. Yeah. They're going to they yeah, give the customer an export. Yeah. Their single bottles of Shipyard Export are still from December 2016. They haven't gotten any Whoa, better. Whoa, that's, that's, that's not good. Uh, I, 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 I see in the one. comments from two. Are two, they still two. selling at the original price, Eric, or original price? I mean, whatever it is for uh, the Shipyard Export, still selling it at a at a, they, they they cut the price down, or is it still? You no, know, it's still a dollar something like it normally is for a single bottle. And, and, and they know and they know the date's bad. No, no. Nope. I like shipyard beers, but uh, a lot of people don't. Now, yeah, I, like, I like the fact that Jacob's drinking that Magnum. Uh, <laughs> Wait, uh, what, what are you drinking, John? We got to know, John. Yeah, it's one now, of my favorite before, beers. But hold on, John. Hold on, John. Oh, no. Don't hold on. No, but I'm talking about 10 <laughs> seconds or less. 10 seconds or less. Okay. Drunken one. As soon as he's finished uh, doing his, and I know what he's about to show us, and I love it. I love it. I yeah. love it. Okay, come on. You can read the comments. Okay, go Jean. Jean-Pierre, the Haitian TV beer connection. <laughs> okay, um, I had several bills I thought about getting. First was either Milwaukee's Best Light. Uh, I thought about Terrapin High Five, but a sleeper beer, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that I thought I have those already. But a sleeper beer that, you know, you see at a lot of restaurants and you very rarely see commercial of it unless – Ming Tsai is doing um, when you watch him his cooking shows on PBS. Oh. You may see his may see the uh, a ad on it, you know, on PBS, whatever, Create TV, the PBS cooking channel. And that beer is Qingdao. Wait a minute. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. you said Carlos. Qingdao. I was going to do Carlsberg. I was at first, and I said, you know what, Carlsberg. Yeah, Carlsberg Elephant, that's good, but let me do Qingdao. And I said, all right. All right. So Qingdao all right. here. Qingdao. I ain't never seen it in my entire life. What yeah. the hell is that? Well, we drink everything in here. Yeah. I, I got, I got to start. It's a all good right. lager, refreshing, pairs with everything, not just Asian food, but you can pair it with anything out there. Uh, it's just a refreshing, yeah. enjoyable uh, lager to me, and uh, I, I, I enjoy it. It's, no. imported got a by Paps. There. it's imported by Paps Brewing Company. It's one of their brands. They also make the Pure Draft. They import the Pure Draft. That was a major contract for Paps to get the Qingdao. Yeah. Because every mm. Chinese restaurant in America sells Qingdao, right? So Right. Uh, and Chang beer. Yeah, Paps, Paps Brewing Company is probably making more money off of Qingdao than any other beer they make. And they don't even oh, make yeah. it. More than Old Tanker. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. They don't even make it. They just import it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'll, keep, I'll keep that in mind. That, that, that's, I've never seen that at all. I'm guessing with a green bottle, is it needs to be drank really cold. Otherwise, it's going to get skunky. Very cold. Very cold. I had it in the freezer for a good hour or so. Yeah. Yes, sir. One, yeah. One, Sparky, I would highly recommend trying Qingdao. It's got an interesting little. I've never seen it. Uh, I'll give it a try if I find it. But you yeah, probably uh, find. You'll probably find it. No, I would imagine. Any yeah. Chinese restaurant, believe me. Any Chinese Asian. All you can eat buffet. That's where I see it all the time, and it goes well <laughs> with the food. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, I, no, no, no. I, I always ask you. Well, a lot of them don't have like beer licensing, so they, they don't have even Budweiser or whatever. Uh, uh, I, I would keep that in mind if I, if I, you're right. I would keep that in mind. And I'll say, <laughs> John Pierce is the right thing to drink. <laughs> now I have, a, I have a viewer. His name is a uh, Griffey fan. Griffey fan always asks me to eat different foods and drink beer, but I don't really do it. Too, I don't really do it too much because it's kind of strange, you know. Like, 
when Mike, remember when Mike wanted Glory to wear a wig when they would go to bed? It's like, wear that blonde wig. I mean, that brunette wig. And Gloria's like, you're a freak, you know? Uh, but anyway, um, Jean, could you do me a favor and drink that beer on video while you eat egg foo young? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, you know what? If um, the, the, the buffet. Hey, the buffet I go to, there's a buffet I go to. I don't go to buffets all the time, but they're once a month, you know, kind of thing. There's one, I mean, just some excellent stuff. In Qingdao, you got uh, Corona. All, all these different things. Sapporo, right? Sapporo, they have Sapporo. They have all these different, you know, Euro lagers there, Kieran Heineken, Ichiban. whatnot. Kieran Ichiban. Yep, Kieran yes. Ichiban, you know. Um, but they, I may end up doing that at the restaurant with my laptop and say, hey, folks, Beer Ramble live. At the Panda <laughs> Express. Yeah, right. Express. Wait a minute. That's a chain restaurant of uh, fast yeah. food chain. Well, it's called the China Panda. You know all these different, you know, Chinese restaurants. China Panda or China Express or <laughs> all you can eat buffet. You know, all these other different names. You know. If you, could, if you could make a video where you eat egg foo young and drink ching tao, that would probably really shrimp lao mein or you know some you know. Uh, General Tao's chicken or something, or uh, it, has to, it, has be, it has to be egg for young. Yeah, uh, cream for some young guy. <laughs> no, it's sour chicken, you know. <laughs> okay, now, guess what? People? Maybe some malt liquor they will serve there. I don't know, maybe. Uh, <laughs> the brothers, <laughs> we have some malt. With it. Guess what, beer fans? Guess what, beer fans? I have a second sleeper. What, 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 I have a second sleeper beer I'm about to bring in. Oh, and you'll never guess. You'll never guess this sleeper beer because you never watched the movie Mask and you don't like Sam Elliott. And you'll never guess. Coors oh, Banquet. Oh, Jake's yummy beer. Everybody called him out already. Is it gonna be Coors Banquet? Okay, oh, so okay. some of the comments really quick. Like I see two one one steel. When I heard oh. Sam Elliott's name, it had to be. It had to be that. So why do you got to ruin everything? All right, drunken one, read the comments. All right, no, no, it's just, it's just as one. I mean, they're, they're, William, they're, what are you drinking? All over in the comments, but uh, uh, I can't. It's F T H whatever that that person uh, something something P A. <laughs> uh, I drink two eleven steel, and and, and so the, and and that uh, isn't yeah. that another malt that uh, uh, is out there. The two eleven steel. I, I've had some two eleven. Uh, yeah, he's reserve, talking, right? yeah, he's talking about steel reserve two eleven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then Heart of the Lion says, I'm drinking a Corona. I'm cracking open a Corona is what is actually being said. Uh, cheers. Or some Schaefer. Whoa, Schaefer. Now that's a oh, cheap man. <laughs> I wish I could get Schaefer's here, man. Oh, yeah, the the Schaefer Schaefer Stadium. I think I think a Schaefer, I think a very, very inexpensive beer. I, I didn't want to say cheap. I said inexpensive. <laughs> 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 My spot in Wildwood, New Jersey. When I go and visit my folks, I'll you know I won't drive the Wildwood, but I remember this is beach community in Wildwood, New Jersey. This little uh, little oh, no. this big liquor warehouse, Sh Schaefer's, uh -huh. thirty pack, ten ninety nine. Schaefer, Schaefer is thirty cents. Thirty cents a beer. Oh man, dude. Schaefer is <laughs> Good the, Schaefer is the one beer to have when you're drinking more than one. Yes, that's the ad. Pong or whatever. You take that to your beer pong buddies, you know. <laughs> that's we're sitting around the barbecue, acting a fool, just pounding them down as fast as you can yeah. think about it, you know. And you tossing a can over your shoulder and there's a big pile of them. <laughs> let me say this about let me say this about Course Banker real fast. It's a sleeper beer because you go to any bar and ninety nine percent of them will not have shape uh course banquet. They do advertise on television, but it just doesn't catch on. You can get it cheap in the grocery store, like four dollars and fifty cents for a six pack of pint cans. So it's and it's a yeah. well made adjunct lager, and it's going down. And it looks like Jacob's enjoying that Magnum, by the way. Hey, I saw I saw a Coors Banquet commercial that said that it's only ever been brewed in Golden, Colorado. Is that true? That's right. Only at the only at the uh, Golden Colorado Distillery, whereas Coors Light is brewed across the United States. Okay, I got another. I got right. another sleeper beer for you. Okay, I think I mentioned this on our Facebook Messenger chat this morning, but uh, 
it's one that I know Jay has done a couple of reviews on and really, really rants and raves about it and really, really likes it. It is in a green bottle. It is from the Netherlands. It starts with a G. It's called Grolsch. Okay. Yeah, yes. I love it. Grosh. I love it. I love it. And my it's, and one of my wishes in life is to try a gross cannon. Heck, oh, cannon. that would be 11%, nice. Eleven percent gross. Go ahead. Go. Eric. This one is five percent alcohol by volume it was in a six pack i think it was like 9.99 for the six pack 11.2 fluid ounce bottles at that at that store that sells old old beer that i keep talking about it says best before october 11th so not too old but not too young um i didn't see uh -oh. the swing on it this one says on it water malted barley and hops so it's not an adjunct lager but it is a industrial strength uh you know uh mass produced kind of a beer but i think it's one of the better ones definitely if you can get some mass produced beer from europe it's going to be a better lager if you ask me you're right uh, eric you're right and 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 another thing about gross is what we get in america is only one there's about 20 different gross beers if you get on their I dutch agree. website yeah if you get on the dutch website didn't there's like 20 different gross beers they even make a gross they call it hecked cannon, which means like, yeah. like cannon, like a you know, like firing a cannon in the Napoleonic Wars. It's eleven percent alcohol. Oh, the thing, the thing that the thing about Grosch is, I believe it started in sixteen since sixteen fifteen. So that's a long time. Um, right. it's known for the swing top bottles. It's known in the uh, the beer brewing community as being an easy beer to 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 bottle because of the swing top. And you just sort of see, uh, push it down to seal it. But really, other than that, and it being in a green bottle from Europe, that's about all that people really know about it. It, I don't, I, I guess I have seen commercials for it, but barely any advertisement in the United States. And I think that's grossly underrated as a beer because it's a really good one. I mean, you can smell like this one is slightly uh, stunked. But it's it, but it's very, it's got a good hoppy bite to it. You can smell a nice clean, uh, biscuity malty character to it. I love Gross. I think it's one of the world's legendary beers. I mean, I could. It's great. Yeah. I mean, I could do a re examination on Gross didn't every we, Wednesday night. Didn't we do a group review of Gross at one time? Yeah, we sure did, and we loved it. Yeah. It's definitely very. Yeah very malty very bready it does have those those grassy earthy kind of hops to it i would even say now i could be crazy and maybe it's the head or maybe it's this ipa glass i just went into but it's a it's got a very creamy mouthfeel and body about it. it's very silky smooth it's on the low a high side of low uh, mild body crisp clean ultra refreshing i'm actually uh, surprisingly enjoying this one a little bit better than the goose ipa right now Oh. You know, we had oh. it here in Mobile, and for whatever reason, when we did that review, we, you know, it, I don't see it when I go to Walmart, Publix, I don't see girls, so I, I don't know. It's it's. And I say it's this not, because not, I'm a. You know how it, you know how it goes. It gets pushed off the uh, shelf. We get it at Mathern's. Hey, but Eric, do you notice it has like a little bit of a sourdough, like sourdough? Yeah, yeah, I, I am noticing. I notice it, yeah, exactly towards the finish. I noticed that in a lot of these European beers, they all have a similar yeast kind of a strain or yeast component to the beers that give it that that twinge you're talking about. And it's very to me, it's very similar to Carlsberg, although oh, for a slightly a bigger body and it's more rich in its flavor and in its mouthfeel. So, I mean, if you like Heineken. I think this is going to be a richer and fuller drinking experience and just the notch above drinking experience, even though I love Carlsberg, but this one's doing me absolutely wonders right now. It's good. I like it. Carlsberg elephant. But that's the Ooh. best. 7.7%. 7 I, <laughs> I cannot get tired of Carlsberg elephant. I just cannot. Yeah. Hey. Malt liquor label out. What you know about that? Well, I got a question for y'all. What do you, what do you think is a grossly overrated beer? Oh, wow. That's a whole nother hangout. I could go on for two hours. Don't even get me started because I will 
lose like 2,000 subscribers and people will be trying to come to my house and kill me. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing that's overrated is the Bud Light Limerita line of crappy drugs. Uh, that yeah. is Bud yeah, Light. Um, is it overrated? Because whoever gives it a high score, I mean. Bud Light. Bud Light for me I, because that's everybody who loves to drink and I can't stand drinking it. I think I'd rather have something else, you know, for a light beer, um, you know. Like Miller High Life Bud Light. Light. Like Miller High Life Light. Miller High. You know or what? my other sleeper beer. Yeah, I, I have. Oh, Yingling Light, sixteen ounce can. Doesn't get much, ninety nine calories, but doesn't taste it. Very, very enjoyable light beer. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got, I got that in my fridge too, John. Yeah, I want to say two things. I want to say two things. Yep. First thing, I'm wiggling my index finger. First thing. The Spartan Optimator. My daughter was 18 years old, and we went to Volk, we went to Volksfest at Deutsch's house, a German club in New Orleans. And and I said, uh, oh, I said, Elizabeth, she does hangouts with me sometimes. You okay. know that. I said, you wanna uh, you wanna try some German beer? German beer? She said, oh yeah, okay. She was 18 years old. And by the way, in Louisiana, you can drink at 18. So uh, nice. I didn't say you could buy beer. I said you could drink. So she, uh, she, she said, "Oh, I never tried Optimator," and she drank it like this. I said, "Try this." She said, "Okay." Yeah. Oh, whoa! Was it that good? She said, "Oh, that's really good." I was like, "Dang!" A lot of men would not go <laughs> like that. So I was. I knew right then. I knew right then she was like a big time beer drinker. And the first video review she ever did with Woo. me was uh, Shimei Redcap. That's a great beer right there. Woo. Second thing, I have one finger left. Second thing, okay, but I just don't know any better. So, so if she thinks that's what beer is about, then that's what she thinks is proper. Oh yeah, so she good just, for her. You're right, drunken one. She yeah, gulped down an alternator. There's your freaking oh, oh. There's your freaking beer. Oh. Rare. Rare. <laughs> that's a whale. Second comment. This Coors Banquet is going down like a jewel, and it's got a nice hot bitterness at the end. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. Get out there and get your Coors Banquet. It is a delightful beer, and it's cheap. Will the smooth, will the, will the smooth taste fool you? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Will the smooth taste fool you? went to Walmart. Jacob Miller. Jacob Mil went to Walmart. Cheap vodka. It's very cheap. No. It's made, I'll tell you about that vodka. It's it's produced by Sazerac Company. Uh oh. Oh. And uh, they they have the contract with Walmart. Sazerac has the contract with Winn Dixie, and Sazerac has the contract with CVS Pharmacy. I bet you they're making a lot of money off those contracts. They're making a lot. I'll of tell you what. Yeah. Oh. You want to see a sleeper bourbon? I know William does. Oh, is it called Evan Williams? Uh oh. Eric, why do you have to ruin all my? <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. I, 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 I was, was I right? I was right. Uh oh. I got I got one for you when it comes to vodkas. I, I don't know just a bunch about a bunch of bunch of like liquors, but I got okay. one. When you finish, I'll let you know. I got one problem with Eric. He's always guess right. <laughs> <laughs> This is Evan Williams, but notice something. Oh, that's cool, actually. The green label. The green label. It's a different Evan Williams, and it is not. It is not on the website. Not. Let me repeat. Not on the website. And I know that William Kepley and John Anile are being tempted, like. But I'm not the serpent in the garden. I'm not like you know trying to make you fall into sin. No spirits. You're not a siren. I understand, John. Or some this way, brother. I I I'll collect it in here. Or some my way. This is the <laughs> this. <laughs> this is the elusive camera. This is the elusive Evan Williams green label. It's charcoal filtered, unlike the regular Evan Williams. 
and it's Woo. sour mash. Well, they're all sour mash. Look at that charcoal filter, and it's aged three years. And so, if what anybody, do you know about that? If anybody wants to join that examination, you just let me know because I bought a bottle in Texas. I bought it in Texas. I have a feeling drunken one can get it in Texas. Yeah, yeah, I, I see it. I, I see it around. Yeah, I see it around. Who got Bush? Uh, Jacob. Oh, oh the, yeah. The, the Bush okay. Ice. Okay, I've never tried this. I used to be a, a very, I used to drink Bush all the time. I buy shit about thirty packs and and blow through with a couple of buddies or even one buddy blow blow through a, a couple of those thirty packs in, in a weekend's time. This isn't bad. That's the first time I've actually tried it. The the, the Bush Ice is okay. It, it's not the same flavor. Uh, uh, it's got a little more complexity to it. Uh, as for descriptors, I'm not sure because I'm terrible at that, but it, it's not bad. This is, uh, if you Grain, haven't tried it. water, uh, sweetness. Uh, it's, it, it's just a bit thicker. It's just a bit more beerish. And, uh, I'm a humbler, so I'm used to, like, thicker things. I don't remember. Uh, I mean, okay. I used to drink beer, uh, bush by the 30 pack, like I said, and, and then I got into home brewing and I just kind of didn't go back to it. When, when we had that hurricane down here last week, uh, I bought a 30 pack just cause I didn't want to drink up all my homebrew sitting at the house cause I couldn't work. I bought another uh, 30 pack of it and it's like, why did I drink this? It's so watery. It's just, <laughs> there's so little flavor. You know? <laughs> but anyway, now that this is, this is quite different than, than the original bush. This is all right. If you haven't tried to give it a whiz, you know, uh, Oh no, I'm kind of spoiled anymore. I'm I'm crap beer guy, but that's just like ten dollars a six pack a lot of times, and yeah, I'll say craft or whether they're crap, you know. <laughs> you know? Whatever. Crap. <laughs> but I, 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 I like what I like what Drunken One is saying because Bush Ice, I agree with him. Bush Ice has a lot more complexity than the watery. It really does, yeah. Um, uninspiring yeah. Bush beer. Bush Ice is a is a sleeper beer. It's a hidden jewel. In the beer, and I know William. William knows about that, and some of y'all. But is it really that much more of a like, of a like a robust beer drinking experience in the grand scheme of beer? Well, though? you're still getting the corn or whatever adjuncts they're putting in it. You're not as a as a home brewer. I, I don't usually use a whole, the whole adjunct thing so much. Although I had done some home brews that did have indeed rice and and uh, corn in them. They're super cheap to buy to, to brew yourself. They're, they're like fifteen dollars for a five gallon batch. Wow. <laughs> right? They're super yeah. cheap. They're, 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 uh, rice is rice and, and, and corn is cheap. Grains are more expensive, and, and so if you want to do a Budweiser clone or or a, a lager clone, you're, you're not getting all that corn and crap in there. And not, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. Uh, you, you you do the you do the the, the lighter ones. Coors all right. There's nothing wrong with yeah. Coors. Place for these kind of beers. There's nothing wrong with them on a hot okay. ass summer day. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And I'll say I'll this. Open one, right. yeah. I'll say this. Yeah. Open one. Um, in in southwestern Louisiana, there's a lot of uh, rice craft beers. They use red rice and all uh, kind of rice because uh, southwestern Louisiana is a big one of the United States is big rice producing areas. So there's a lot of rice farms. So they, they want to showcase uh, rice beers, just like in Japan. If you get the hit that Chino nest and other uh, companies like that, there's a lot that, so there is a rice beer craft scene, but it's, you know, it's kind of obscure. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's the thing. I, the thing is it, it's so much cheaper to do. And that's why, I, that's why, uh, Budweiser has has taught everybody this is what is beer because it's really cheap ingredients, you know. <laughs> That's why they put all the adjuncts in. I'm not, no, no I'm not. Don't hold, don't take it the wrong way. I'm Budweiser is great beer. So is Bush. Blah blah. blah. But it, it, there's a time and place for that. Um, that's what they're doing. That's why they're doing it. And, and back in, well, you you're you're the nostalgia guy. You know exactly when to come in. That's when, that's when they had the football players coming in saying, oh, yeah, well, real men drink this light beer. And right, you know, and they brought in celebrities and stuff. You know, you, you, I'm no good with who's who, how it goes. And, and, and so I'm sure you can fill us in more on that. But 
that's when the football players came in and said, oh, yeah, well, real men drink this stuff. And, and, and so that promoted and, and so everybody else, uh, as like the normal society, thought, well, hey, someone does it, so I'll do it too, you know. And But they, they've taught us to, to, to drink a, a, a beer that's really full of adjunct. Uh, take no offense. Again, I'm not trying to be that guy, and I'm not against uh, like normal beer. I'm a I'm a craft beer guy. Uh, give me some more grain. Give me give me some more meat and potatoes. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah. I actually actually I 100% agree with what you're saying. Um, you know, when they first came out with light beer in 1967, they tried to sell it as a health product. Uh, they had women that, in leot they had women in leotards working out. And saying, drink this light beer if you want to be in in good shape, you'll be fit. And people said, uh, and and I hate to say this, but it's true. They said, oh, I'm not drinking that beer. They'll think I'm a homosexual, you know. So uh, <laughs> it didn't it didn't uh, it didn't catch on at all. So they re <laughs> right. So in 1975, they re framed it, reframed it as a macho. Uh, football player beer, you know, which is totally oxymoronic, right? Like, I'm a big football player. I burn a lot of calories, so I want to drink a thin beer with no flavor and no body. Yeah, right. But it worked. It worked. It revolutionized the beer world. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then people said, I can be like Rosie Greer. I can drink a light beer and be a tough guy, which was totally like, no, if you're a tough guy, you drink Spot and Optimator. Not not uh, Miller Lite, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, if you burn a bunch of calories, you want a, you want a bunch of calories, yeah. <laughs> right. You, if you're a football player, you need the most cal caloric beer on the market. Now, uh, Gary says twelve packs of it sell like friggin' mad. Yeah, I believe that. I was gonna say that when I went to the beers, the, the same beer store I keep talking about. When I went to the beer store. And I was getting a couple of six packs and I was doing a mix of six. One of the things that I was looking for at the beer store that wasn't Guinness was just a lower ABV um, stout or a porter. So I think one of the more uh, I think one of the more overrated things, especially when it comes to craft beer, and I love IPAs, don't get me wrong, it's IPAs in general and Imperial Stouts. It's like those two styles kind of dominate imperial higher apv porter or stout and ipas they kind of dominate the craft beer scene a little bit too much to the point where if you want to drink a craft beer and you're looking for a different kind of a beer style it's very 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 hard to find anything other than those styles very hard in craft yeah, beer unless you get a belgian unless you go for a belgian beer you almost can't find it right right it was, it was very annoying yeah because I, I like darker beers. I like dark beers, but you can't always drink an imperial stout when you want a stout, or, or you mm -hmm. might not always like Guinness. The wheat yeah. beers are always there, though, and so are the sour beers. I've. They're oh yeah, everybody, everybody everybody's popular. selling. Yeah, you're right, Jacob. Everybody's selling Creeks now. Everybody's selling Creek. Yeah. K R I E K. What's that mean? Creek. You know, K-R-I-E-K. -E right, right. I heard you say it. What's that mean? Well, it's like a sour beer with lactose sugar, and it's like... Um, oh, it's got the lactose. It's, it's a different yeast variety then. Yeah, it's more of a sour. It's an odd right one. My it just came out with a beta. There's a beta beer in Louisiana. It's called a Cherry Creek. It's cherries in creek. Um, I didn't mm -hmm. pull the trigger on it because it's like I love milk, and I like milk in, in cereal but i don't necessarily like milk with beer i mean maybe i'm a weirdo but um mm. it's like barrel age i like bourbon i drink bourbon a lot maybe right, right. i don't like it yeah, necessarily with beer. Yeah, okay. it's not with beer it's a it's a fat, <laughs> thing to the beer i understand that i know that i know that okay coming up coming up coming up we're, we're winding down we're winding down Next week, and this is going to upset some people like Jean Pierre who can't get it. Oh, man. But he can make that. He can make that drive. He can make that drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. I gave him some information about a, a a tourist attraction that doesn't even cost any money. He can go to that. But um, 
Jean Pierre, you're going to be mad at me. What's but, up? Uh, <laughs> next week we've got oh, there is. we've got Milwaukee's best ice. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Well, I will see y'all in a week after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're going downhill, are we? We're going downhill. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Two weeks from now. Two weeks from now, we have Ice House. Nine percent. That's what I get. The good no 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 we got the good ice house the five point five everybody's friend not everybody's enemy <laughs> six point zero everybody's enemy it was teetering on malt liquor on malt liquor territory so yeah and then and then on uh, oh yeah it was a malt liquor. and then on September thirty uh, twenty seventh we have sort of like a thing that William and my William and myself developed co uh, co co current uh, concurrently. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I know that word, Eric. <laughs> uh, concurrently, that means at the same time. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Called, <laughs> it's called. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. It's called the three tier system, yay or nay. Now we're getting really detailed and uh, we're getting legalistic. The three-tier uh -oh. system, yay or nay? The three-tier system, yay or nay? I love that one. 50-50. Oh, you talking about brewing beer? Three-tier system? Yes. Yes. Okay. No. All right. No, right. You're not brewing. Not, not, not brewing. Not my business. <laughs> well, well, brewing, distributing, and selling. Yeah, brewing, distributing, and selling. Oh, three no. Three-tier system. Three-tier three brewing, yeah, that, that's uh, HLT, Mash 10, and Brew Kill. All right, yeah, all right. All right, all right. Dead, right. Come on now. No, it's like Eric saying, brewer, distributor, and retailer. What, so what, what, I already know what I'm going to say. All right, any last comments on sleeper beers? Nope, I think we all have our own favorites and whatnot, and, you know, consider sleeper versus the top 20 best-selling beers or whatever. But, I, you know. I, would, I would say this, and what I would say is, is don't let commercials, don't let beer, don't let uh, beer kit. Hell, don't even let us tell you what you should or shouldn't try. We would probably just plain old recommend that you try everything and anything. Therefore, you can decide what you really, really like, and if you really, really like the beer, and maybe not a lot of people buy it, then maybe that means that you've cracked into something new and special. You're right. Every You're, right. You You're right. You're right. Amen. You're right. Amen. You're right. Try yeah, it got, all. We're, we're, we, we agree with Eric. Try it all. Yeah, I, I got a little input, and then I'll be done. Um, uh, reach for the stuff on the bottom row. Uh, reach, reach, for that, reach for that stuff. Uh, what, what? What was that? What was your last one? Reach, reach for the stars. Reach for the stars. Well, no, 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 no. Reach for the bottom row because that, that's the way things are marketed a lot of times. If you have to reach for it, there's one that's literally called Bad Ass Beer. It's got a donkey on the can. It's a white can. But it's called Bad Ass Beer. It's like two ninety nine a six pack of, of like you know, the twelve ounce bottles or twelve ounce cans. Excuse me, twelve ounce cans. And what was the other one? Damn it, I forget now that I'm telling this story. I, I told y'all like last week or whatever. Anyway, they're, 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 reach for the bottom. They're, they're, there's ones that just haven't been discovered. What well, Terry, help me out, man. There, there, there was ones, uh, hams, hams, that's it, that's hams. I did hams. Read, read, read. <laughs> oh, if you see hams in your head, you get you some hams. I did. That's, that's, that's what I meant to say. That's what I was thinking. Of. If you find hams, and it's not gonna be on the top shelf, it's not gonna be at, at, on, 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 you know, like your, your eyesight level. Find hams, try hams, and, and that's a damn good beer. There's nothing wrong with that beer. Hell yeah! Badass hams. Badass hams for dinner. You, 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 I agree with that. You probably won't, you probably won't find that one badass beer because it's so generic. But uh, you, you can find <laughs> hams about that. I agree with what he's saying there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I agree with that drunken one, Sparky. Uh, yeah. uh, any any last comments uh, from uh, Bill or Eric or Gary or Jacob or William? Yeah, I, I have one. Eric Eric touched on it when he was talking about his, his about the Grolsch. The one bad part about the sleeper beer deal and discovering sleeper beers is to, is that they don't turn very much. 
So when you when you find something that you think you're on to, check the date before you take it out the door. Yeah, true that. Yeah, ah, good, yeah. good point. Good point. Good yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Good because bad because old beer does not really work too well. Mm -hmm. It's not like whiskey or brandy or uh, or uh, rum. It doesn't age. Or well, wine. Well, it can. Most of the beers that we're talking about are not IPAs and, and full of hops, so that, that that probably wouldn't make so much of a difference. But yeah. all right, any last any last comments? Uh keep tasting those great beers. Cheers. We'll see you soon. Yeah, watch Thomas Metal seventy five. He does Massachusetts beer reviews. Thank watch, you, sir. Watch Gary, who who did a very interesting uh, extrapolation of the. Uh, Richard's Wild Irish Rose, which I watched both. Ooh. Both, and they were long. They were not short. Gary does That was nasty. Yeah, that's, uh, like it. it's, pretty night it's pretty nightmarish when you compare. You know, it's funny because you take Richard's Wild Irish Rose, which is like a nightmare in a bottle, and you compare <laughs> it to uh, uh, Carlo Rossi, it's like a whole different world. You know, it's like... Uh, and the Carlo Rossi is cheaper per ounce. So why would you buy Richard's Wild Irish Rose, right? Just to try it. Yeah, I mean, you got to try it. I'm never buying it again. Like, like, like Drunken One says, you got to try it. You got to try it. No matter what, you got to try it. Anyway, what were you saying? Huh? You were saying something like my reviews are long or something? No, I was saying they're long, but I like them because they're not rushed. I don't like, like, they're like, I play them. I, like, put them on and I'm like listening. And I'm saying, okay, he's going through the steps, you know. Um, this, everything, oh. have, everything does not have to be short. <laughs> was citizen? Yes. Was uh, wait? You talking about my sex life? Quit it, damn no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, y'all were thinking that I just said it. No, I didn't say, <laughs> I didn't say it was short. I said it was definitive. Oh, right. oh, oh. oh. Well, what? I'm not gonna get any more later. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, but um, I'm, no, I like Gary's. I like Gary's. Uh, they're kind of like paste. They're paste. They're like, okay, here's the product. Gary, you rule. And he was like, it it does actually smell like a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! I was like, all right, yeah, he's on to something. But no, but um, uh, no. No, it's it's a bizarre product. I mean, it is worth trying because you you have to think to yourself, why would people actually purchase this on a weekly basis to consume? You know, it's like this is this is like caustic. It's eating up your insides. But, uh, <laughs> Let's not think about that part, Ron. Come on, Dad. I you found know, it. It smelled uh, more like nail polish rather than a gas station. But, uh. but, now, but now let's. Let's be fair. Gary was reviewing the 17% and I reviewed the 13%. That's a big difference. Secondly, oh, yeah. secondly, um, well, yeah, secondly, I got the uh, Evan Williams green label, the 40% alcohol, 80 proof, charcoal filtered, aged 36 months bourbon, which uh, I, I'm thinking that most people can acquire, but it's a bizarre product because it's not on the website. As far as they're concerned, it doesn't exist. But just go to your liquor outlet, and you'll notice that it does. Uh, Jacob is polishing off the... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? That's Jacob's... Uh, I'm not going to interfere with Jacob's game. And then William's thinking. He's thinking, you know what I mean? He's thinking. Nice, nice man. William's always thinking. That's the way he rolls. He's you want to take this over? He's done you want to take... I've waited patiently on here. Could I make a comment at the end? Yeah, go ahead. It's over now. Go. If I was running a halfway house for these brands, <laughs> unappreciated, I think a few of the occupants would have to be old Milwaukee Ice. Yes, yes, yes. Amen, amen. Macro House. Liquor. Which one's that? <laughs> When the hell did you get that? I ain't never oh. seen that. Either. All right. The macro house. Be on the look. All right. Not, you know not, not mentioned on their website, Cold 45 Double Malt Liquor. Ooh. 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 
Oh my goodness, that's like you ban coffee. You ban coffee. And which another one that's like, already been mentioned a couple of times, which I like myself personally, I'll drink on a regular basis, is the Keystone Ice. Yeah, I agree with that. I think either beer or good night, huh? Of a halfway house for unappreciated beer brands, the sleepers, so to speak. And a note on the uh, the uh, old tanker ale was uh, to me, it's sort of like a fruit cake in a can. There, there are definitely brown bread notes, raisin notes in it, and you get the fruity sweetness. But this would be one fruit cake you wouldn't be re gifting at Christmas. You would want to keep it. No doubt. You are right about that, boy. Oh, boy. You are right about that. Well, okay. <laughs> overtime. So, no, there ain't no overtime because I'm watching Major League Baseball tonight. And I don't care what happens. Secondly, <laughs> <laughs> Red Sox went to 19 innings. Yeah, we did. We well, took I mean, that I, I, mean, I would have gone to sleep on that. Secondly, I'm going to – this is my plan. This is my plan. I'm going to get on there and do a video review tomorrow for the green label Evan Williams. And I've checked YouTube, and there's, what, two, three videos for that over the last 10 years. So that's fascinating. And if anybody wants to do an examination, you got to contact me. I'm not going to go begging for people to join me. And uh, thirdly, next week, get ready for your Mil your Milwaukee's Best Ice, the good Milwaukee's Best Ice, not the dark side, the, uh, the good side of the force. Okay. The, uh, the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi of ice beers, not the Darth Vader of ice ice. Milwaukee's what an analogy. What? I said, what an analogy. Yeah, because somebody posted that novel, uh, Splinter of the Mind's Eye, today, so that got me thinking about Scott. And if you've never read Splinter of the Mind's Eye, you might want to read it. All right. Um, anyway, that's it. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say. We're finished. It's over. Done. Done. Over and done.